Hi there, I'm Michelle the Painter from Berkshire Paint and & Sip, and this is Paint and & Sip at Home. All right, so today we're gonna to be painting Tuscan Hayfield, and I'm gonna be sipping on a little Chianti, which is very appropriate for the occasion. So let's get painted and let's get sipping. All right, so what I'm using for my materials today is a stretched and primed 16 by 20 inch canvas. If you're painting along with me, you can certainly switch up the size, but that's what I'm gonna be using. I'll be using acrylic paint today. The colors are titanium white, cobalt blue, burnt umber, which I'll call brown, burnt sienna, which I'll call rust. I have deep yellow, Mars black, and green oxide. And again, if you're painting with me, you can certainly switch up the colors, but that's what I'm gonna be using. For my tools today, I have a standard number two pencil, and then I'm gonna be using three brushes. I have a half inch wide bristle brush. I have a number six round brush, and I have a number three round brush, and I'll refer to these as small, medium, and large as we go through the painting process. And if you're painting along with me, you'll probably need a cup of water for washing your brushes, as well as a paper towel for drying your brushes. And down below this video, I do have a couple of additional resources for you for your painting process. I have um, a link where you can purchase the same exact paint kit that I'm using from the large canvas to the same paints and the same brushes and all that good stuff. So that's down there for you. And there's also a, another link where you can download a free image of the final painting. So you can print that image and use it as visual reference as you go through the painting process. And there's also written step-by-step -step instructions there for you as well. And that's all we're gonna need today. All right, so what we're gonna do for the first step is we are drawing our, a line for our hills. So I'm gonna be using my pencil and I'm gonna give you a couple of markers and then we're just gonna connect the markers with a couple of rolling, rolling Tuscan hills. So on the left-hand side, you're gonna to wanna to come down about a quarter of the way and make yourself a mark. And to know how far that is, you can just kinda of eyeball your halfway point and then just go about halfway between those two and make yourself a mark. And then on the right hand side, I'm gonna make a mark a little bit higher than the halfway point. So for me, I think the halfway point is right about here. And I'm just gonna come up just a tiny bit, make myself another mark. And then I'm gonna connect these two marks. So I want a big hill right in through here because that's where I wanna sit my house. And then I'm just gonna have another rolling hill coming down um, because that's what they do in Tuscany. They just roll on for, for miles and miles. So from this mark, I'm gonna come up here. You don't wanna to go too, too high because you you wanna have room for your house. And then I'm just gonna kind of slope it down a little bit past my halfway point. And then I'm gonna give myself another little hill in through here. And of course you can modify them if you want to. And that's all we're gonna do for our initial sketch. So you can get out your big brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we are painting our sky. So I'm gonna use my big bristle brush and I'm gonna use brown, blue, and white. And for me, I kind of want um, this to look like the sun is either going down or coming up, either a sunset or a sunrise. Um, so I really want the lightest part of my sky to be down and to the right. So I'm gonna have it dark, up here and then I'm gonna fade it down to lighter down there. So I'm gonna start with blue and brown on my brush and I'm just gonna be using a left to right kind of brush stroke and I don't go very far before I start picking up a little bit of white and this way the, the sky will be nice and soft for me and you can really have it as light or as dark as you want. Um, I, I want mine a little bit on the darker side, especially at the top so I can have some a nice kind of drama type effect and add a little bit more brown over on this side. And then I'm gonna go nice and light down by that bottom right hand side. I'm just going left to right. Um, when I do get to my land, I'm not, I'm still gonna go left to right. I don't want it to look like I'm painting around my hills. So even if you bump into your hill, that's okay. And I'm not really using a, a 
strong brush stroke. I'm just kind of skirting my brush left to right. You could certainly do circles if you wanted there to look like there's maybe clouds floating by, um, but I'm just kind of doing this method. I'm not using a lot of paint, so that way if I do want to add any, you know, any more paint to it, it will dry quickly for me and then I could do another layer on top of it and I'm just kind of finishing up here by coming all the way down to my hill going left to right and you can imagine this to be a nice autumn day and you know where that sky's kind of warm but it's still a beautiful nice day outside so you can have it as light or as dark as you want and then we are going to be using the same brush for the next step so once you've got your sky painted in here you can wash and dry this brush and get ready for the next step all right so what we're going to do for the next step is we're doing the first layer of our land um, i'm using my large brush and the colors that i'm using are brown rust yellow and white um, and how I'm going to do this I really want this to resemble rolling hills so I'm going to use my brown first to kind of give myself a little bit of a road map and then once I've got the brown on there then I'm going to progressively get lighter I really want the bottom of my hills to be the darkest and then the top of them to be the lightest but I want to have some kind of identity as to maybe I have like three distinct hills so from here I'm just going to kind of make myself a little bit of a mark like that I'm going to come down a little bit in through here and then make myself kind of a mark like that maybe I'll put a little bit up and through here because this is going to be the shadowed side and now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of get the rest of that brown off of my brush. Well, not the rest, but get brush it on so I have like more of wispy looks. Now I'm going to pick up some of that rust without washing my brush. And I'm going to start to add additional um, strokes. I don't want a solid color, so I'm going to just kind of go back and forth for a while between brown and rust so I can have almost like this sporadic kind of light spots and dark spots. Um, and I am kind of putting the brush strokes in the direction that I feel like the hill is going. Um, so that way when we're done with it, we're gonna have um, movement within our hill. And again, this is just the first layer. So if it doesn't look awesome after this layer, don't worry about it. So right now I'm still just kind of picking up brown and rust. And in a minute, I'm gonna start picking up um, brown, rust, and yellow. But I just kind of want to get this in here just to kind of get the get the party started, make sure I have enough darkness down at the bottom. And I'm kind of using a left to right brush stroke, but at times you might see me just kind of wiggling my brush. Now I'm gonna pick up brown, rust, and yellow, and it's gonna to start to get more on the lighter, more, um, I would say, vibrant side, since we're using a little bit of yellow in there. And I want it to get lighter and lighter as it goes up towards the top of the hill. So I am gonna disperse some of this yellow throughout the hills, but I'm gonna make it the lightest at the top. So you can have yours as light as or as dark as you want. Um, and just remember, we will be doing another layer on top of these hills. But if you can, during this process, just kind of still see the movement of these hills, that's awesome. Because um, I do, I've seen these hills in person and they just roll on and on and on for miles and miles and miles, which is really cool. And during this, what I'm trying to represent the autumn time of the year, they're going to be more on I don't want to call it dead grass, <laughs> but it's definitely like um, a, a drier grass looking um, field or hills that, that happen. Um, so as I'm getting towards the top, now I'm going to start utilizing a little bit of white in my brush also and getting all of these to kind of blend in together. And I'm just kind of using a loose brush stroke right now, just making sure I've got nice coverage over the whole thing. And you can see I still have those dark marks, but I'm not really concentrating on making this perfect right now. I just am really looking to get a nice natural kind of dirty, rustic kind of color, autumn 
maybe auburn or chestnut kind of color throughout here. I'm going to go ahead and get this hill on here. So again, I'm kind of using all four of my colors, um, the yellow, white, rust, and brown, but I am um, concentrating on kind of keeping the illusion that these are rolling hills. So I've got to have a little bit of that lightness up at the top. Um, but you want the colors to blend in together too. So again, we'll do another layer in a little bit that's going to bring all of these colors together and make it look like there's some texture on the ground. Um, but once you've got this step done, we are going to be switching brushes. We're going to use the small brush for the next step. So once you've got a good layer on your land, you can put this big brush away in your water cup, take out your small brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we are doing the first layer or the first step to our house or our little farm, whatever you wanna call it. Um, but before we start that, I do wanna kind of forewarn you that you do wanna have at least your sky dry before we start this step. Um, so you can either, you know, take an extra long break and take a couple extra sips if it's not dry yet or you could sit here and blow on it, or you could just pick up a blow dryer and blow dry your canvas so it's nice and dry. Um, so I'm gonna be using my small brush, and the colors that I'm gonna be using are white, yellow, rust, and brown. And for me, I'm gonna have two buildings to my farm or my house, um, and I still am going to maintain that the light is coming from over there. So I'm actually going to do two sides to each building. One side's going to be lighter than the other. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make myself kind of like a, a creamy kind of yellow color. So I'm going to take a little bit of white and I'm going to add a touch of yellow. So I have like a creamy yellow and I'm going to add maybe a little bit of brown. I know this is really exciting watching me mix paint. At least you don't have to sit here and watch the paint dry. Um, so I'm just getting it almost like um, a nice pale yellow. They have beautiful soft um, pastel colors, mostly on the neutral, natural yellow tan side for these type of style um, houses and buildings. So I think that's kind of what the color I'm gonna go for. I want two shades, one is gonna be lighter than the other. So I'm gonna take that, that's gonna be my light shade and I'm gonna make another shade that's a little bit darker. So I add a touch of brown and a touch of rust for a little bit darker of a shade. And if it's not, I think I want a little more yellow. So one's gonna be the highlighted side of the building and the other is gonna be the shadowed side of the building. So you just wanna make sure that they're two distinct. You know, one is definitely lighter and than the other. And once you've got your two shades, we're gonna go for the lighter shade first. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make myself two rectangles. One is gonna be kind of sitting on top of the hill and then I've got one next to it. It's gonna be a little bit sh more shallow. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a vertical line about this at the center of my hill that is almost, I would say, almost halfway between the top of my hill and my sky. But this is, we're just kind of making whatever size houses we want. Maybe you want yours to be much larger than mine. And then I'm gonna go over to the right, make myself another vertical line. I'm gonna connect those two and I'm just gonna color them in with that lighter shade of creamy yellow, kind of like, um, oh, what can, I, what can I associate this with? I don't know, like pudding, <laughs> tapioca pudding maybe. That might be white, I don't know. I don't eat tapioca pudding very much, but butterscotch maybe? I don't know. My colors on real things. It's just a creamy yellow color. <laughs> and then I'm gonna go to the right of this. And so the left and right and the top 
horizontal and vertical, but whatever happens on your hill happens on your hill. So then I'm gonna go over here, maybe about an inch. I'm gonna make another vertical line and I'm only gonna come up maybe a third or halfway up this line. I'm gonna go over to the right as far as you want. I mean, this is your little farmhouse. You can make it whatever you imagine it to be. And then I'm gonna come down and then I'm gonna color that in with my lighter shade of yellow. Now I'm gonna wipe my brush off on my paper towel and I'm gonna pick up some of the darker shade and I'm going to at the, I'm gonna start at the top left and I'm gonna make a slightly diagonal line going down and you can make it again as long as you want um, and then I'm gonna make another vertical line and I'm gonna color this in. And if when you're doing this, if you feel that it's not um, noticeably darker than this side, then you definitely want to make it darker. Um, so that way we've got a good illusion going on. We will have another step where we're gonna kind of accentuate the lightness and the darkness, but definitely you wanna make sure that you've got it um, dark enough. I actually think I'm gonna make mine just a smidge darker now that I am, I'm really looking at it next to the, the color, the, the front. So I'm gonna make mine just a little bit darker. As I'm doing it, I'm gonna come over here to this right building and I'm gonna make myself a slightly diagonal line for this side of the building and then I'm gonna color it in with my darker shade. I'll color that one in a second, just letting it dry for a minute. Maybe I'll bring this up just a little bit. And again, the, these are, I'm just making these buildings on the fly. They're not representational of any exact building. Um, I do know that these are, I'm, I'm emulating this style of home that you see a lot in Tuscany. They're, it's on the Mediterranean, this house, this style of house with those, these colors really is in a, a very common architectural style. So now I've got to paint the first layer of the roof. So I'm going to be using my rust and brown and yellow for that. And again, I want the this side to be lighter than the left side. So the, the these roofs are low pitched. They don't go up really high. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put a little bit of rust and brown on my brush at the same time for my dark side and then I'll lighten it up a little bit with maybe some yellow and white for the for the um, light side. So I want this roof to come out a little bit further than the end of my building. So from this corner I'm just going to draw a line that's going to extend a little bit past um, the building and now I'm going to do a diagonal line that goes to about the halfway point of this um, this section like this and it, I don't want it to go too too high and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a horizontal line that's going to come um, well actually sorry I'm going to make one more diagonal line one more diagonal line right here and then I'll make a horizontal line like this to connect those two color in this side and while I have those two colors on my brush I'm going to go and do the same thing on this building so I will make a diagonal line back here I can't extend it because that part of the building is behind my um, behind the other building I'm going to make my horizontal line like this and then just color this in and then I'm going to add a little bit of yellow maybe a little bit of white to my brush to get the other the front side on it so rust and yellow is where I'll start maybe I'll add a little bit of um, white but what I'm going to do is I'm going to make myself a diagonal line on this side and extend it just a little bit past make myself my horizontal line something like that and then I'm going to connect the top I do want this to be lighter so again if it's not light enough add a little bit of white to your brush and just make sure you've got this side a little bit lighter my hand is a little bit in the way sorry about that and again we're going to be doing another um, step on this later so if it's not perfect right now don't worry about it and even if you have to reshape it along the way don't worry about it so again I'm going to do my hor my line at that roof line and extend it a little bit past the building's edge a little bit so you can see it and then I'm going to do a shallow diagonal line like that and then a horizontal line to make it meet the other 
piece of the roof. And then we are going to be switching brushes to our, mm, we're gonna use our, our large brush for the next step. So once you've got this first layer of your building done, you can wash and dry your large brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we are doing the second layer of the land. So this is where you get just, just kind of get to let your hair down. I'm gonna be using my big brush and I'm gonna be, I really just wanna add softness to my hills, but yet a little bit of texture too. So I'm gonna be using the same kind of colors that I use, or the same colors that I used in the first round, which are brown, rust, yellow, and white. And I want this to look like it's kind of grassy, but on the little softer side. So really what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be, um, at times you're gonna see me doing my brush left to right, and other times I'm gonna be flicking, and, and I'm gonna be doing both those strokes throughout the whole thing. So I, at times I'm gonna go super fast because I, I I just wanna move the paint as it's, as it's drying. Um, but all the while, I still want to maintain the tops light and down here is going to be the darkest. So I don't want to lose that thought process. And I do want there to still kind of look like there's a hill in through here. And maybe there's like a little flat spot here for some of the bales of hay to sit. So here I go. So I'm going to pick up a little bit of brown to start. And I'm just going to start kind of flicking my brush upwards. Just kind of getting this little brown on here. Now I'm gonna put a little bit of a rust on here. Just kind of flicking it in the upward motion. And I'm gonna go fast because I wanna be able to kind of move this as it's drying. I just picked up a little bit of yellow and maybe a teeny bit of white too right now. And I'm gonna just work the bottom and then I'll work go up in a minute. And then I'm just gonna kind of dust my brush left to right as it's drying. Maybe I'm gonna put on a little bit more. Put on as much paint as you want. Work it whatever way you want. If you want it to be softer looking, I kind of want to get rid of um, some of those original really scratchy kind of brush stroke marks. So I'm gonna just really kind of work this paint to get myself a textural look and to um, maintain it looking, you know, like grass. So I'm just kind of free freestyling this and making it look whatever way I want. We do have another layer that we're gonna be doing on the grass later on or on the um, hills later on. So just know that that's gonna be coming as well. I just kind of, I know I said I was gonna work my way up, but I just kind of decided I wanted to go up here next. That's the beauty of painting. You just get to go in whatever kind of, um, uh, order that you would like. I put just put rust and yellow and really I'm just going to kind of keep um, switching colors on my brush wherever I'm feeling I need to put a particular color that's what I'm going to do. So most of my colors during this process are probably going to be the rust and the yellow and the white. I won't use much too much brown. I used it a lot at the bottom but as I'm going through this area and you can see sometimes I'm dotting, sometimes I'm going left to right, sometimes I'm kind of doing up and down. I just want it to have a real nice natural kind of textural look to it. Um, and again, we are going to be doing another um, fun step to the grass at, or to the ground at the end. So if you don't get yours perfect on this step, don't worry about it. You'll have another opportunity to kind of work it out. Oh, this is fun where I'm kind of pushing it and flicking it up too. Um, and again, I'm just kind of, I want this to look like it's dry grass <laughs> so i wanted to have some texture to it and that's how how i'm getting it you, i guess you could use like a sponge or you could use a different kind of brush that's going to get you this um fun kind of effect um but it's all going to be you just kind of feeling out the brush that you're using and getting it to do what you want it to do but you can see i'm lightening up kind of the top of this particular hill here and I'm just you know it's a process sometimes a, a step can take you know two seconds to do and sometimes it can take 20 minutes to do to get it to the way that you want it or sometimes you need to add additional layers to it but you know I, I want to hit this area over here 
And a lot of times it's just a visual preference. So what I'm doing on mine might look too chaotic for you or too um, out of order for you. Um, I really like the uh, uh, Mother Nature's kind of wild side. So when it comes to doing grass or foliage and stuff, I always steer towards the unkept, more wild side of it as opposed to a nicely cut lawn and manicured bushes and stuff like that. Um, but maybe, maybe you like to um, go that route you know, so whatever is visually appealing for you. And then once you've got this beautiful layer on here and you can keep working it until you feel that you've got it as, you know, textured or as solid as you want. Don't forget, we've got big hay bales that are gonna be adorning your entire canvas. So once you've got this the way that you want, we are going to be, let's see, we're gonna be switching brushes to our we're gonna to go to our small brush for the next step. So once you've got this layer of your ground done, you can put this brush away in your water cup and take out your small brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we are finishing our buildings. So I'm gonna be using my small brush and this is where I'm gonna put windows and doors and maybe a little chimney or two and accentuate any highlights or shadows that I want. So the colors that I'm gonna be using are green, black, brown, rust, yellow, white, so all the colors except for blue. <laughs> so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna kind of start by putting some windows in place. I, uh, so there are kind of, I don't wanna call them native colors, but there, you see a lot of green shutters and um, like moldings and stuff on these particular style of houses. So I'm just gonna be using green for um, my windows and then maybe I'll put a little highlight and shadow on them. And you can have as many windows or doors as you want. I'm just gonna kind of make a couple in through here, maybe one there, maybe one here. And again, I'm not going for photorealism here. I am just having fun. Maybe these are a couple of little doors or tall windows down by the um, edge of the building. Maybe I've got some tall or some high narrow windows up and through here and they put these um like sh louvered shutters that's from a distance it almost looks like a solid color um but when you get up close it's almost like wooden louvered um window things some of them don't even have glass in their windows because it's such beautiful nice weather that all they need to do is shut these little louvers when the rain comes and and they're fine um so you see that a lot on these um mediterranean style houses so i know i said i was going to use black on my door but i guess i'm just doing all green and then i'll add some other um colors once i've got all of my little boxes in so you can do rectangles um in all different sizes and shapes i think I'll, i like these tall or these high narrow ones so i'll do a couple over here maybe one more and then maybe i'll have another door in through here so now that i've got that on there I'm just wiping my brush off on my paper towel. I'm picking up a little bit of black and I guess I'm gonna just do a little bit of a shadow over on this left-hand side. I know, again, this left-hand side of the building should be darker, so the more darkness I put over on this side, the more natural it's gonna look. I think I'm gonna turn most of this black. I don't know why I did it green. I really wanted a black door. So now it's black. <laughs> and then I'm gonna put maybe a little shadow over here on this side of the window. Maybe a couple of little lines to it give the illusion that there's those louvers to these windows. And then I'll do the same thing on these ones. And I'm just doing really subtle details on this. I, we're just looking at this way off in the distance. It doesn't have to be anything perfect. Um, now I'm just wiping my brush off. I'm gonna pick up a little bit of white to do a little bit of a highlight on the right side of, this, of these louvers as if they're being lit up by the um, sun that is either coming up or going down. So you can certainly do the same if you'd like. 
and then I'm going to add my shadow and my highlights onto, well, first I'm gonna put some chimneys. So I'm just wiping my brush off on my paper towel. I'm gonna to pick up some brown and rust. You can have as many chimneys as you want or as few as you want. They're just really small little triangles or excuse me, rectangles. Maybe you have one that's tall and one that's short. They have lots of little um, fireplaces in these houses too. Oh, maybe I want a little, no, I think I'm gonna put a tree there. Um, and now, so shadows and highlights. So I want the left side of my buildings to be darker and the right to be lighter. So I'm gonna use a little bit of um, brown and black to give myself a shadow underneath this a roof line. So, little shadow underneath there. Same thing here, brown and black, little shadow. Then I wipe my brush off on my paper towel and I'm just picking up brown and I'm gonna do the shadow under here. So I'm making this shadow a little bit lighter than the shadow that was on the left side. So it's just brown underneath my roof line, brown underneath my roof line, and then I'm gonna, with this brown on my brush, I'm gonna put a little bit of a shadow over on the left side of the building. So I'm just adding a little bit of shadow. And if you feel like you've gone too much, you can just pick up some of your original color that you had for that um, side of the building. I'm gonna do the same thing here, just a little bit of brown. The remnants of brown on my brush are gonna turn that a little bit darker. I'm gonna do the same thing on the roof. So I'm gonna make it a little bit darker over here on the left-hand side. And if it's not dark enough, you can always pick up a teeny tiny bit of black just to give yourself a nice illusion of it really being shadowed over there on the left-hand side. Same thing on here. And then if you had to, you could pick up some of that original rust color too if you have any areas that are don't look like they're fully painted. Some of these are tiled roofs. They have these um, like terracotta tiles on them too. So um, if you find yourself with little lumps and bumps, that's okay. And then on this side, I'm gonna be using a little bit of rust on the left and then more yellow and white on the right, just to again, give it a little bit of dimension. So a little bit over there is that rust color and then I'll put a little bit of yellow and white over on this right hand side to give a little highlight. Whoops, I had too much darkness. Just picked up a little bit more white on my brush. I really want this to read as it's being highlighted from that light source over on the right hand side. So even if you add a white outline over there on the right, that works. Ooh, and I've got to do the front of my building too. So same thing, adding white to the right on the front of that building. And then you can even just take it and just blend it in towards the interior of that side. Same thing here, a little bit of white, and then just kind of blending it in. And again, if you don't feel like you your building has enough color on it, you can certainly, now's the time to do that. And I need to add a little highlight and shadow onto my chimney. So going into the brown and black for the left-hand side, just an itty bitty line over on that left hand side of each piece of my chimney. And then I'll pick some kind of lighter color for the right hand side as well. And then for the next step, we're gonna be using our medium and our small brushes. So once you've got your highlights and your shadows and your windows and your doors, you can wash and dry the small brush and your medium brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we are painting the first layer on our hay bales. So I'm gonna be using both my small and my medium brush, and the colors that I'm gonna be using are rust, brown, yellow, and white. And what I'm gonna do is I am gonna make kind of two sides to the hay bales. I'm gonna have the darker side, which is the side away from the sun, and the lighter side, which is the side towards the sun. So they're all a series of circles and ovals and plus their side. <laughs> so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna use my small brush to kind of get, make an outline of each bale and then I'll use both my small and my medium brush to paint them in. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna use one of 
whatever remnants I have from the light colors on the house to use as my outline so I can really see it. Um, so just some creamy color that you've got on your palette. I'm gonna do my first one with the, it, my first one is gonna be the biggest one that's gonna be closest to us. So this one is gonna occupy a huge space in through here. So I'm gonna go up about, I would say almost halfway up my canvas, or if you have a distinct hill coming in through here, maybe to about the top of it, and about over maybe a third or a little bit more than a third, and you can make yourself a mark, and then come straight down about an inch shy of the bottom of your canvas and make yourself a mark. And then you can really just connect those two with a circle. It doesn't have to be a perfect circle. You can see I'm gonna kind of sketch mine um, because that's the way a hay bale is gonna look. It's gonna be all ruffled around the edges. So I'm just kind of making myself a circle-esque shape. If it's a little bit oval, that's okay. And once I've got that on there, I need to make a curved line on the right hand side. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make two horizontal lines from the top and the bottom a certain distance. So I'm gonna go maybe about three inches to the right. So I'm gonna go like this and then go about the same distance on the right hand side from here. And I made myself a mark about halfway between here and here as the end of my um, hay bale. And now I'm gonna connect these two with a similar curve to the right side of here. So I've got this to here, and then this is gonna be a similar curve to the right side. And again, this is just the back side of the hay bale. So we've got the front, this is gonna be the side, and this will be the back of it. So that's gonna be my biggest one. Now I'm gonna go ahead and make some smaller ones. So I'm gonna have one maybe sitting back. These are all gonna progressively get smaller as they're going farther and farther away from us. So I'm gonna just progressively do them in size. So I'm gonna have one just behind here. So I'm gonna go maybe a little bit taller, maybe somewhere about here, and it's gonna come down maybe to about here. And I'm just gonna make myself an oval and again, if yours end up being like circle type shapes or ovals, whatever works is totally fine. This one's gonna kind of hide behind the corner of here a little bit. Maybe it dips down a little bit. It doesn't have to be perfectly cylindrical either. These kind of look like tubes of sorts when we're just making little outlines like this. I'm gonna have another one that's gonna be sitting back behind here and I'm gonna have the circle part facing the sun. So I'm gonna have this one, maybe maybe this one is just somewhere in this vicinity and then I'll do my two little lines here and then a curve over here. Oh, they look like Tootsie Rolls. <laughs> it's, a, it's a little chocolate treat. <laughs> um, so now I'm gonna have, maybe I'll have another one somewhere in this vicinity and so maybe I've got this one a little bit lower than this one and maybe over here. Maybe it's almost the same size as that one. So you can see I'm getting a little bit freer than I was on my first one where I was really concerned at it being perfect. This one I'm, I'm a lot less concerned because these are just, these are not gonna be as much of a focal point as that one is. Maybe I'll have a little tiny one over here and maybe this one again is the circle part is facing the the sun and then i want a couple of tiny ones off in the distance there maybe i've got one over here this one's really oval maybe this is just a little tiny one in through there and then maybe i've got one down at the you know cascading down this little hill here maybe this one's got to go right here and then to color in I'm gonna switch brushes. I'm gonna use my medium brush. You can use your small brush on the smaller ones if you want to. And I'm gonna make the side that's closest to the sun light and the side that's away from the sun dark. So this is the way side. So I'm gonna be using rust and brown and I'm just really coloring it in with a messy circular kind of brush stroke. We have much work to do on these hay bales. This is really just kind of getting the uh, original or initial layer on them. So this is the dark side, so I'm using rust and brown. And if you don't get 100% coverage, that's okay. This is the dark side over here. So I'm just gonna take my brush and just kind of color in 
that dark side. This is the dark side here. So I'm just doing all my dark sides first and then I'll do my light sides. Again, this is my dark side over here. So for me, all the sides on the left are the dark sides. So same thing with this one here. I think I'm switching my, to my small brush for the little tiny ones. So this is my dark side. And then this is my dark side. And you can leave a little bit of that border showing um, because we've got, um, you'll have light pieces of hay on it anyways. Now I'm gonna use a light color for here. So I'm gonna use rust yellow and white and you can use them at the same time on your brush if you want to or you could pre-mix a color i like using them at the same time because that's going to give me a variety of colors in the color combination um, but if you're more comfortable pre-mixing yourself a color that's fine um, and again i'm just doing the light side so rust yellow and white getting myself this light side. And if one of them is lighter or darker than the other, that's great. That's what happens in mother nature is everything ends up being different colors and different shades from one another. And I am kind of using a sideways kind of brush stroke or a cylindrical, whatever um, way that, that hay would be um, kind of rolling. Maybe rolling it isn't the right word, but um, I wanna be able to see it and make it look like it's in a curved fashion. So that's how I'm doing that. And then I'm gonna be using my small brush for the next step. So once you've got this first layer of your hay bales on here, you can wash and dry this small brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we are painting our cypress trees and any bushes or little foliage stuff that you want. I'm gonna be using my small brush. The colors that I'm using are black, brown, green, yellow, and white. And how I'm gonna do this is I am going to be putting some tree trunks in place. I'm gonna have everything with a dark side on the left and a light side on the right. And I'm gonna show you how I, how I do it. So I'm gonna be putting green, brown, and black on my brush at the same time. And I'm gonna be creating some tree trunks. So these cypress trees can be really tall. So if you want yours taller than mine or more than mine, feel free to do so. So I'm gonna make a couple of tree trunks on this side. You can go bottom to top or top to bottom. It doesn't matter, whatever floats your boat is fine by me. So I'm gonna have this one kind of in this vicinity. And I'm just gonna keep making as many as I want. I'm gonna have a shorter one somewhere in through here. I'm gonna have a really tall one in between my two houses. So this one's going almost all the way up to the top of my canvas. And if you hit your land like I did, don't worry about it. We can hide it in a minute. I'm gonna have a couple um, over here on the right side of this house, a tall one and a little short one. And Again, we're just kind of making place markers, I guess is the is a good terminology. I like mine all different heights. You can have yours however you want them to be. I think I want that one there and maybe this one here. Oops, that one's a little crooked. That's okay. Um, and then I'm gonna make maybe one in through here. So now that I have my place markers, and I keep, I keep painting into my land, that's okay. Um, so these cypress trees, they kind of, you can see a little bit of their trunk most of the time. And they're, they, they're kind of like pine trees, but their needles all go up and they're kind of wide at the bottom and get more narrow at the top. So I'm gonna go on the left-hand side first and I'm using green, black, and brown, the same colors that I used on my trunk. I'm gonna start a little of the way up and I'm just gonna be doing these um, kind of chaotic little um, flicks going up and I want it to be more narrow as it gets towards the top of the tree. I think I want this a little bit wider down at the bottom. And I'm gonna do all my left sides first um, because I've got the dark color on my brush so start a little bit up and I just kind of start flicking or you can go down whatever way works for you. I think I might go down so you guys can see it a little bit better so my hand is not in the way. Um, but again, you want it really the most narrow at the top of the tree. So as you're coming down, you can get it more 
wider. Um, and if your paint is see-through, use a little bit more black. That's going to help it become less see-through. And as you get down towards the bottom, just make sure that you don't go all the way to the, to the trunk or yeah, to the ground, I should say. And again, whatever is easiest for you. You can either go down, up, or up, down, whatever, whatever works, as long as it's a little bit more narrow at the top and a little bit floofier down to near the bottom. And I'm gonna do this for all of them. And if you need to make your tree grow taller because you've made it too wide at the top, just make it taller. Um, that's always a great way to correct the situation. And again, I'm gonna just keep going until I've got all of these. And you can see that I'm really kind of doing a messy, a messy kind of stroke. I don't want it to be too systematic. These trees are, you know, they've got different varieties of these kind of trees. Some of them have lots of thick kind of um, pine needles and some of them are on the thinner side. So I've chosen this style because this is what I saw the most of when I, when I saw these trees in person. But again, they can be super tall. Now what I'm gonna do, I'm not washing my brush. I'm just gonna pick up green and yellow and I'm gonna do the right hand side of the tree and you'll see it's gonna to start to pop and be really nice and a little bit more brighter. And if it's too bright for you, then you can certainly dull down that yellow a little bit. And I didn't wash my brush because I want these colors to kind of intermingle. I do also want it to look like there's a little bit of texture to it. So if you want to, you can add a tiny bit of white to your brush as well. And that's gonna help you add a little bit more um, of a dimensional kind of element to it. You wanna try and avoid seeing that trunk down the middle. So um, if you need to use more paint or if you need to do a second layer, just so you um, disguise that trunk down the middle, that will definitely make it look a little bit more realistic. But I'm doing this lighter side on the right to continue to tell the story that my light source is over there. Um, and you know, you kind of want them to be not necessarily exactly equal on both sides, but you want each side of the tree to look like it belongs to, to, its, it, to itself. Um, I want a little bit more texture down this middle, make sure I'm hiding that trunk. And it doesn't have to just be left to right. If you need to kind of go back and make sure that it blends well with the right hand side, so be it. Um, you don't want it to just look like you did one side one color and the other side the other color. So if you um, overlap that center a little bit, that's gonna help to make it look like that, you know, both sides of the tree belong together. And I'm just gonna kind of keep keep up till I, I've got this whole, all of my trees with their pretty pine needles. I don't know, I think they are a variety of pine trees. They certainly have similar, um, like little needles as regular pine, well, American pine trees. <laughs> they, American pine trees are probably not regular pine trees to the rest of the world, but they are to me. Um, and then once we've got this done, we are going to use our medium brush for the next step. Oh, actually, yeah, you're, I, I forgot. I wanna do a little bit of the um, bushes down at the bottom to make it look like the um, my trees are not just floating there. I like to add some little bit of bushes down at the bottom. So I'm just gonna use the same brush and use a little bit of whatever colors you had in the tree and you can kind of just work some area down at the bottom. This helps to make it so they don't look like they're just floating there. Even if you wanted to use a little bit of your rust or some of the other colors that you have in the hill, you can certainly do that. They have lots of like low lying little bushes and stuff. So this really works if you um, wanna add any kind of little element down towards the um, towards the hill or even next to the house. Maybe there's like a little bush sitting next to the house. So have fun with this, fill it in as much as you want. Maybe there's, you know, a little baby cypress off, you know, in between these two or, you know, whatever, whatever is visually appealing to you. Hide whatever you need to hide, like this little trunk that is not hiding very well for me. <laughs> um, and then we're gonna use that medium brush for the next step. So once you've got all your little bushes in place, you can wash and dry this small brush and get ready for the next step.
All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we are adding the shadow underneath our hay bales on the ground. So you can use any combination of black, brown, and rust. You just need something that is darker than what, a little bit darker than whatever the ground is that it's sitting on. So if down in here, I'll probably use more black. As I get up and through here, I'll probably use more brown and rust. And again, my, my light source is over there, so I'm putting a shadow underneath them and a little bit to the left. So here we go. I'm gonna start with a little bit of brown and black on my brush. Let me get this cup out of the way. And I'm gonna do my big one first. And what I'm really gonna do is I'm gonna kind of underline my hay bale. And then I'm gonna bring this up a little bit up the bale on the left-hand side. And then I'm gonna just start kind of wiggling my brush, almost rubbing in that paint onto um, what's the ground. And this way, you're gonna be able to see some of that other color underneath it, which is gonna make it look much more natural. It doesn't need to be a solid color. It just needs to be that ground, only darker. So as we move towards here, maybe you need to, at some point, switch to your smaller brush, totally up to you. I'm gonna just use my medium brush and I'm gonna make sure that I don't have too much paint on my brush, so a lot of times I'll wipe it off on my paper towel. I can always add more. It's tough to take away once it's on there. So again, I'm just gonna kind of underline this a little bit and then I'm gonna bring this dark area up a little bit and then just kind of rub it out. And I'm reloading my brush with a teeny bit of brown. I still have a little bit of black left on my brush, so in through here. And again, you just wanna make sure you can see it. So if it's not dark enough, definitely add a little bit more darkness to it. Um, there's no sense in putting it there if you can't see it, <laughs> but you don't need it to be black. That's the whole thing. You just want it to be darker than whatever it's sitting on. So I've got this one in through here. I think I want a little bit more brown, a little bit less black, because I'm going in a little bit lighter of an area. I'm gonna bring this around here a little bit, and I'm just gonna kind of rub this out. I really just want it to look nice and natural as if it's just turning that, that grassy area a little bit darker. And I've got this, got maybe three little three little ones left to go. So I'm just gonna underline this one and then bring it up. I Systematic, I've got the same process for all of them. You know, underline it, then pull it out to the left. Um, I am gonna switch brushes to my small brush for these two, two tiny little ones over on the right because they're tiny and I wanna make sure that I don't overdo it. So I just switched to my small brush and I'm just gonna kind of underline this, bring it up a little bit and just rub it out a little bit. So same process, underline, bring it around the front here, and then just pull it out a little bit. And then we're gonna be using both the small and the medium brush for the next step as well. So just wash them and get ready. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we are adding the highlights and the shadows to the actual bales themselves. So. I'm gonna be using both of my small and medium brush and the colors that I'm gonna be using are black, brown, rust, yellow, and white. Um, and this is going to kind of start the real texture kind of look of the hay bales. Some of the bales that I was seeing can be really smooth on the outside, but they're always gonna have a real textured inside to them. Um, and some of them can be rough on the outside too, but if yours end up nice and smooth, that's okay. So. Um, how I'm gonna do this is I'm gonna have darkness at the bottom of the curved part, and I'm also gonna have a lot of darkness in through the side that's away from the sun. And then I'll have a lot of lightness on the tops um, towards the sun. So I'm gonna start with my medium brush. I am starting with black, rust, and brown on my brush. I'm gonna start with this biggest one because it's the closest and it's got the most detail on it. So I have black, rust and brown, and I'm just gonna kind of pull up these darker colors from the bottom in a really kind of um, 
loose fashion. I don't want it to be perfect because I, I want you to kind of see some of those lighter spots in there too, um, but I want you to understand that this is curved and it's got um, a shadowed area underneath. And I'm gonna use those same three colors on the other ones that I can use this medium brush for, and I'm just kind of pulling it up from the bottom in this curved kind of fashion. So you understand, the viewer understands that it is a round object. This is the lighter side, but it's still gonna have some shadow underneath here, but I'm gonna reserve that for a minute from now because I don't really wanna use black on it. But this one I can use black, so I'm just gonna kind of pull this up because I, I still have a little black, brown, and rust on my brush right now and these insides are gonna be the darker ones. So now that I still have black, brown, and rust on my brush, I'm gonna do some of these interior um, kind of swirly marks. Oops, that one doesn't have one. And I'm really gonna just kind of do it in a messy kind of fashion because I, I want you to see that there's these little shadowy kind of areas in between the um, the brighter pieces of hay. So I'm just doing a second layer and I'm just adding some little darker streaks throughout here. Whoops, that's the inside or the, outs the outside. These are little tiny ones. I'm gonna pick up my small brush, black, brown, and rust just to give myself a couple of little darker spots through in these tiny ones. And while I've got, no, I don't need it over there. All right, so now that I've got the darker areas of the, the darkest side. Oh, actually I did a little bit there. So maybe keep it consistent with here. Let me just, oh, I had some nice rust on there. I was afraid I was gonna make this too dark over here. So that's why I was kind of holding off. Oop, I don't know if you can hear, but my doggy is barking. <laughs> Hopefully he'll, he'll pipe down in a minute. But um, so I got a little bit of darkness there. Now I'm gonna wash these brushes for the highlight part. Cause I really, don't want it to be, I want them to blend and look like they belong together, but I really want it nice and bright at the top. So I'm gonna start with white on my brush, especially for this big one. And I'm just gonna kind of outline that top area and I'm gonna start kind of pulling it down in that cylindrical fashion. And once I've started it, now I can start picking up maybe some yellow and rust and getting it to kind of blend in with that um, main side to it. And then just kind of working it down into um, the bottom of the hay bale or roll. I guess they can be called both things, hay bale, hay roll. And I'm just kind of intermingling these colors in through here. And you might want yours more of a beige or a pale kind of color. So just add more of the the rust and the um, brown to it. And I'm gonna do this to all of the highlighted sides. So you might use your small brush for, for these littler ones. So whatever works for you, feel free to do. Um, and if the, again, if the white is too white for you, you can bring in some of the pale color that you had on your houses, but you really want the side that's closest to the, you know, perceived to be closest to the um, the sun to be your lightest. And again, I'm just adding that highlight and just kind of pulling it down the side of the bale. I'm gonna keep switching my brushes from medium to, to the small one. So if you see my brush just changing on the fly, that's cause that's, that's the way it goes from whatever my hand tells me to do is what I'm gonna do. Um, so again, I'm just adding that highlight and just pulling it down, making sure that you can really see the bend in that, um, in that bale. This one's definitely gonna need a small brush as I go in through here, make sure that you can see it. And I really want you to be able to see it too. So, you know, maybe yours needs to be lighter or darker than mine because of whatever color your, um, your ground ended up being. Maybe your ground is much darker or lighter than mine, so you're gonna have to adjust your highlights and your shadows accordingly, but I'm going based on what my, my background is. And again, I just added that light color on the top and I'm just pulling it down so it kind of um, merges with that um, darker area down at the bottom. I'm gonna do the same thing over here and because this is the light side of it, adding that little bit of 
brightness in through here. And again, I'm not doing a solid color because I want it to look like texture. Like these are the little pieces of hay just kind of sticking out or just kind of, um, you know, trying to be organized by the machine that rolled them up. But once you feel that you've got a nice highlight in through here, then I'm gonna just take my, um, my brush and add little bits of highlights in that rolled part. So I still am just using that medium brush and I'm gonna just kind of skirt in just a couple of little pieces and they don't have to be really perfect. You just want them to um, tell the viewer that maybe there's a, a couple of lighter pieces. You can even almost crisscross them. Um, and then we are going to be using, let's see, what are we gonna use next? We're gonna use the, the medium brush for the next step. So once you've got your shadows and your highlights and you've got little pops of, of pieces of the hay just kind of poking their little heads out in the middle here, you can wash and dry that medium brush. Sorry, I'm almost done. <laughs> Sometimes when I know that I'm on one of these little steps, it's like, yeah, but you can keep going. You can just keep making little pieces of, of hay sticking out wherever you want to. <laughs> All right, I think that's gonna do it for me. And then again, medium brush for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we are finishing our ground. So I'm gonna use my medium brush, but you might feel that you wanna use your large brush or your small brush. Um, what I'm really doing is the main goal for me is I'm going to be adding little bits of um, more uh, identifiable pieces of grass down at the bottom so it doesn't, uh, at the bottom of the hay bales. And then if I have any areas that I feel need softening or enhancing, then I'll do that as well. So you can use any colors that you've used for the ground. So that's going to be brown, rust, yellow, and white. Um, and if you want them to look, so you can kind of see them, you'll want to add, uh, use a little bit of white to enhance them a little bit. So here we go. I'm just going to kind of put all four colors on my brush at the same time. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to just kind of make these little bits of pieces. Oops, I need a little bit more yellow and white so you can actually see them. Little bits of pieces of grass, just almost to give it a little bit more of a realistic look. Um, where you can see the individual pieces. I don't push my brush hard. Um, this way I can have some skinnier lines, some thicker lines. Um, if I wanna push hard, I can certainly do that and get some thicker lines, but I'm really just kind of looking to um, give it a little bit more of a realistic look. Like maybe these bales of hay have been sitting here for a couple of weeks or, you know, and the grass has started to grow around them. Um, if you want to soften any areas of the land, like if I want this to be a little bit lighter behind it, I can just kind of rub my brush and make a little bit lighter area of the ground. So wherever you feel like you need to adjust the area at, at this point is kind of the, the time to do it. Again, I want a couple little pieces of grass, just kind of maybe these bales of hay have been here and somebody came and mowed the hill, but they couldn't mow right around the, the bales of hay because they were in the way. So you just, you know, use your imagination to figure out, you know, what the purpose of these little cute pieces of grass is. But for me, it's really get sets the stage so it, they don't look like they're kind of floating. We've, we've put a nice shadow below them, um, but now I like, I like to ground my things. Um, so this is where I'm using my brush to just kind of add these little, these little accents of, you know, pieces of little fluffy grass that haven't been mowed. They, you know, are just kind of gathering around that bale of hay. And if you want, you can add more or less, or you know, maybe yours are darker or lighter. Um, whatever again is visually appealing. Maybe your your um, shadow was really too bold for you, so you can use these bits of of grass to kind of dull down a shadow that might not have worked out exactly as you had planned. So you can really utilize this to um, again modify adjust, 
you know, make fancier, make more subtle, whatever works for you. I want a couple of little pieces over here. And you just kind of keep tweaking it until it's exactly as you want it to be. I got a little bald spot in my hill over here, so I'll use this as an opportunity to kind of rub in some additional paint. If you wanted to add some lightness to your hill, this is, you know, this is the time to finalize it, to make sure all those little um, things that are gonna make it read the way that you want it to read. Make sure that you have incorporated them as much as you want. So you can just add a little bit of lightness. Maybe I've got a little, little bit more of a dip in my hill here and wanna make sure that I've expressed that. Uh, maybe I want this top of this hill to be just a little bit more bright. So I add a little bit more white and just kind of rub it in. That's gonna give you know, continue the story of the, you know, the the light is over on the right hand side. So I just keep adjusting and making little tweaks until I feel that I have said as much as I want to say in my ground. And then for the next step, we are gonna use our small brush. So once you've got your ground finished, you can put your medium brush away in your water cup and take out your small brush for the next step. All right, so we are on to the final step of our hay bales. I'm gonna be using my small brush and I'm gonna be using all the colors that I used in them before. So I'm gonna be using black if I have to, brown, rust, yellow, and white. And I'm really just gonna go one hay bale to the next. And what I'm looking to do is make sure all the edges are visible. If one of them is being hidden, like the edge of this to me is almost too hidden, I'm gonna enhance it. So I'm looking to make sure my edges are visible and that I have enough little pieces of hay, straggly hay coming out so it looks really nice and textured. So I'm gonna start with this one. So for me, I want this right edge to be a little bit more visible. So I'm gonna actually, I picked up a little bit of brown and I'm just gonna make like a little shadowy area on the inside of the swirly part. So that made that edge pop out a little bit more. And maybe I'll use a little bit more of the darkness on this back side. So it looks more like it's in the shadow and you can really end up seeing the edge of it a little bit more. And I'm just gonna kind of go systematically from one bale to the next, but let me just finish this one before I move on to the next one. So I can see the edges, I can, I feel like I've got enough identity on it. So I'm kind of good with that one. So I'm gonna go on to the next one and I'm just kind of looking for things that need work. So the edge here, I think I could use a little bit more of an edge over there. So I could go light or a little bit darkness or both. So I did a little dark. Now maybe I have a little bit extra of a highlight over here on the edge. And straggly pieces are gonna pop out anywhere. So you can take your little brush and almost make the just little, I don't wanna call them pieces of hair, but pieces, pieces of a hay hair, <laughs> just kind of, going in various directions. So as I'm doing this step, that's also what I'm gonna be doing. So I wanna do that in through here as well, picking up some more yellow and white and rust and just kind of making myself these little chaotic pieces of um, hay that are just sticking out. So I'm looking for my edges. I feel like I've got my edges on that one. So now I'm adding these little accents of, um, the pieces of hay. And again, they don't have to really all go cylindrical. You don't have to do it in one circle because these are gonna stick out. They don't, they don't, um, it's not like we went and brushed their hair, their hay hair. <laughs> they just, it, they just stick out. They're long pieces of dried grass that have a way of making their way out of the circle. So if you need more, um, you know, 
shadows or highlights or whatever, if it's not looking as textured as you want, just bring a little bit of the darkness into there, a little bit of black, and then just kind of keep tweaking it until you feel like you've got enough of the identity. Um, just be careful of too many colors on your brush at one time, because then it might just all merge together and, and look like a solid color. So I'm just going to move right to this one. Um, I think it's pretty good, but I want I think I want a little bit more darkness down in this back end here, maybe a little bit more so you can see this edge over there and then I'm going to add maybe a little bit more of my lightness and little pieces of um, straggly pieces of hay that are sticking out all over the place. I think I want a little bit more depth in this middle so I'm adding a little just a little bit more of the darkness. You know again it's what's what's working for you visually and it's going to go one little bale of hay at a time i um when i was a kid we used to actually we had horses and we would go um to pick up truckfuls of bales of hay ours were rectangle or square but as time went on they started to make these round ones but when i was a kid they were always the square ones and it was so itchy we had a hay loft and we used to have um, like parties up in uh, like kid parties where we would build forts with our with our hay bales. So I it's really nostalgic for me to start painting hay. <laughs> Just brings me back to my childhood. Um, but again, ours weren't round. Ours were the um, the square ones. But you know. I digress. Sometimes when I'm painting, I just often think of weird, weird stuff that you may not even, you know, want to learn about, but <laughs> you get to hear about it if you're painting with me. So again, I was making sure my edges were the way that I wanted. Now I'm just adding some little straggly pieces. Um, yellow and white is going to be my, my color choice right now to get these little weird pieces along the, you know, inside to make it look like there's more kind of dimension in through here and again just have fun with this you could sit here and tweak it for days and days and days <laughs> but you you set your own time limit and you make it as detailed as you want or as soft as you want you know like I said some of these are really can be more of a solid you know a solid color so or a solid texture so especially on the exterior so if you're if you're looking for that type of look it'll it'll work um, just you know go with whatever is working for you visually and then I've got that big one I'm gonna tackle here in a minute so once I've got this one, I think this one looks pretty pretty good so now I'm gonna start working on the big one all right so I am going to just make sure my exterior here is what I want it to be and then maybe I'll put a couple little ones, that was too big. See if you get to it fast enough you can just wipe it away with your hand. <laughs> maybe just go slower. Go slower and just kind of pop out a couple little pieces on the end and then as you're, one of the things if you want it to really look like there's um, individual pieces is don't always do it in the same direction so if you stay in this curved um, lane but every now and again just throw one in a different direction like a slightly different angle that's going to help with the illusion of there being um, individual strands that are just kind of making their way um, in their own way that they want to um, so just again every now and again just kind of put your brush in a little bit different direction and that's going to help with um, making it look like there's some some extra stuff in there. And I'm gonna go in this center. I'm gonna really just have some fun in through here, kind of getting all of these little tiny pieces here and there and everywhere and making, I'm trying to make sure that I don't do it too, too systematic, but I still want to have the illusion that it's going around in a circle because that's how the, the shape was created. Um, but you can, you know, tweak this as much as you want and I know that still know that this is the shadowed side so I don't want to go too light but 
I am putting a bunch of light pieces in right now and I'm gonna come back with some of that darkness on top so that it's kind of like layering it and that's gonna make it look even more natural. So I've got those, maybe a couple kind of sticking out every now and again. Now I'm gonna go into my rust and brown and start adding some of those back in there. But if it begins to get too muddled or if you feel like you know, you're know you working Every, all the colors are just kind of working together. Move on to another one, let it dry for a second, and then come back. And then you can start tweaking those colors a little bit more. Um, I'm gonna just add maybe a little bit more darkness in the middle here with my black, brown, and rust. And again, I just keep kind of switching colors. Um, I had the lightness on there for a little while. Now I'm going back into the darker colors to get them to intermingle and make them all look like they're intertwined together, which is exactly what's happening to them. Um, but again, if you if your brush is larger or if you paint, you've used a lot of paint, what can happen is your, co your colors can start to merge together and get all kind of muddled looking. So again, if that starts to happen, just go work on another bale and come back to this one. Um, I'm thinking that's that's looking pretty good to me so far. I just want to touch those other ones and make sure I can see this edge. Um, so I'm going to just kind of put a little bit more darkness on this edge in through here. And then I'm going to let it sit for a minute as I go do the other two. And I might come back and do a little bit more to it, but I'm, I'm, I'm digging it at the moment. So I'm going to just kind of wipe my brush off on my paper towel, put some yellow and white on here. Make sure that I can see these edges and put a couple little pieces in through here. I think I need to add a little bit um, of something on this back end because I feel like I'm losing it a little bit. So just add a little bit more darkness coming up in through there and then maybe an even lighter highlight on the edge of it. So I added lightness and darkness just to give it so I, so I can see it a little bit more. And I just didn't want it to get lost in my, in my landscape. So you gotta make sure that you have enough contrast. If, if you can't see it, that means you need more contrast, which means it needs to be lighter or darker. Oops, almost just dropped my brush there. I just wanna make a little bit darker in through here, maybe even a teeny tiny bit of black. And then we have one tiny little step left to go, and it's gonna be with this small brush. So once you have your hay bales all nice and textured, and they're all popping right off of your canvas for you, you can wash and dry this small brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is the last step, which is the last step of any painting, which is to sign it. So I usually sign mine in the bottom left or the bottom right. I think I'm gonna sign this one in the bottom left. I'm using my small brush. I'm gonna use black paint. I sign mine with my initials, but you could certainly sign yours with the your first name or you could use a date, you could put a symbol on there, whatever works for you is totally fine by me. And that is gonna conclude this painting. I hope you enjoyed the process. I hope you love your painting and I look forward to painting and sipping with you again sometime.